Yo, it's Thursday, January 6, 2021. You know what? We're about halfway through. Fucking 15 deep. And that's just in episodes. Season 4, episode 15 of the Corporate Cowboys podcast. Everything you are about to hear is not legal advice. It's not, it's not even personal opinion. It's just cold, calculating game. Which, if you choose to take up, you become a player. Don't hate the player. Do not hate the game. My name is Alex. I'm your host. If you haven't visited the Corporate Cowboys podcast, if you haven't heard it yet, I highly suggest you go back because it's just picking up steam. It's becoming more and more cutthroat. It's becoming more and more I'm going to say on edge, but it's still technically politically correct given the field that we're going into where we have to uh, litigate and uh, we have to try certain facts and certain arguments. We have to pin arguments against one another and have them challenge each other, have them battle it out. Essentially, what you want to do is be better at advocacy, at battling via advocacy. You want to be a better speaker, a better orator, a better thinker, critical thinking, a better logistician. You want to use logic. You want to use tact, obviously. That's what this entire podcast was founded on, and that's what it, 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 and that's what it remains. It remains a, a social experiment of sorts where I help you help me help you. How about that? So the feedback loop is positive. The feedback loop is eternal. And unless the internet goes out, it'll remain eternal. Now, the title for this <clears throat> because again, we're already halfway through. We're in the fourth season. And I said with every season that comes up, it's just going to become more and more cathartic. It's going to, it's it, more and more cathartic, evoking catharsis. I mean, it, it's not so much the feel good podcast that you traditionally think. It's going to be much more rationalized, much more secularized. Every now and then I'll invoke uh, religiosity, uh, piety, right? But it's just for the passion and it's just for effect. It's just for enhancement. It's, it's just for, <laughs> it, it, it's just for emphasis, let's call it, right? And that, that is what the basis of language is. It's to be able to communicate a message, but not only through words, but through sound, but through feeling, that said, let's get to the fucking crux of this podcast. And let's get to the meat and the potatoes. Enough with the introduction and the disclaimer. Speaking of which, do not tell me your plans. I don't want to fucking hear them unless you are my client of sorts. If you're paying me to hear you out and uh, to help you set up some type of professional plan for your career, be it advancement, be it expansion the creation of some sort of livelihood, shit, we can help with that. But until then, I mean, <clears throat> the stories I appreciate, the problems I appreciate, and every now and then, I mean, if it's, if it's, it, it, hey, if you're treating this, if you're treating your confession as some form of catharsis, then by all means, do that. If it's highly incriminating, you don't want to be sending that shit across state lines regardless. Do not put it in the mail. I mean, if you if if you've developed and honed your own way of expression and crafted it into something a little bit more vague, a little bit more uh palatable, i.e. politically correct. I just don't want to say politically correct because then uh, you water down the substance. There is a way, there is a way to keep the substance whole and have it be digest the digestible so you could still keep, <clears throat> I guess, the gray pill intact. And you just got to coat it with a little sugar. You got to be a hustler. You got to finesse that shit. 
And that's how motherfuckers rise to power. That's where charisma comes from. You got to develop it within. Okay? And <clears throat> again, going back to the title of this podcast, The Whites of Their Eyes. That's how you get close to somebody. You get close to someone by being a hustler, by finessing, by having that charisma. I mean, charisma comes in many forms. Sometimes it's silent. They say gangsters move in silent, but then some gangsters are extremely outspoken. They're flashy. They're flamboyant. They're, they're, they're boisterous. They're belligerent at times. And that'll get them places. It may not get them to every place. It may not get them to every uh, conceivable positive place. And it might get them into some tight spots. It could get them ripped. It could get them licked and lashed. But I, I, I mean, that, that's all slang for just getting ripped off and, and, and you know, marked. But, but if, if what you want to do is get to a place that you want to be in, right? You've got to learn, you've got to be perceptive, you've got to be observant of what's going on around you, what, of what the norms look like, of, of how best to camouflage yourself, how to be the chameleon, the social chameleon that you want to be to get up close to your target, to your mark, to your objective, and actually see the whites of their eyes when you quote unquote deal with them. Obviously, because it all comes back to personal interaction, to personal communication. This, this society that we live in, the society that we live in runs on personal interaction. And some motherfuckers really like the concept. Some power-hungry, pathological motherfuckers really like the idea of alienating everyone else via their interactions. And, and, uh... Not consuming, but consolidating, consolidating the power that they get from this alienating of others. They're the ones that necessarily install themselves in positions of power, the ones that become politicians. And you don't become a politician overnight un unless you have a substantial amount of hustle, of finesse, of of that I'm not going to say je ne sais quoi because I know exactly what the fuck it is. You just got to have that spirit, that indomitable spirit of moving the fuck up, of 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 get, not getting over on people, but of just getting past obstacles, getting over hindrances and 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 they could be individuals that get in your way and want to keep you from achieving what it is you want to go out and get. That that Plus luck. And you do need a substantial amount of luck. Like these uh, these little cats that are on social media and all of a sudden become viral overnight on some dipshit ass little video. On, on Maybe not a dipshit ass little. I, I don't mean to denigrate. Okay, my bad. But on, on a catchy, on a catchy video, but something that lacks substance. Like s something that, that, that is, <laughs> that literally is in the long run insignificant. But it's catchy. And by luck, by fate, by the algorithm, it goes viral. And then they acquire the, the, the sort of power. They may not even have been uh, uh, pining or, or biding their time for this power. They may not even have been calculating to, to arrive in this position of power. And yet they have. Yet through luck, they have. So they have that little spark, a little bit of hustle, and they got a whole lot of fucking luck. On the flip side, motherfuckers at the bottom who are consciously corporate cowboys got to have a whole lot of hustle, a whole lot of finesse. They've got to have a lot of skills and know how to develop them, know how to cultivate new ones and hone them down into something sharp, something implementable, something deployable, like a fucking shank, like a tool. Like, I mean, we're, yeah, we're, we're talking prison tactics. I don't want to say guerrilla tactics, but because we live within a society and a system of institutions, we are all necessarily institutionalized. Whether or not you choose to recognize this, we all run around with shanks. That, that is what it is at the end of the day. We are primates. 
Some of us dress a little different than others. Some of us look a little different than others. Some of us speak differently, have different vocabularies, have different talents, work in different industries. And it comes back full circle. We're just people. We're just humans trying to get by in what we know how to do. But the more you know how to do or the better you know how to do it puts you in a position where you may require a little less finesse, a little less hustle. And luck, as luck would have it, will be on your side. That's business. You take care of business and business takes care of yourself. Now, when you go out of your way to shake hands with somebody, do not, for the sake of your own dignity, sacrifice your values in order to shake hands. Even if you come from a perceived position of weakness, like if motherfuckers want something from you, don't just give it up. And <laughs> damn, that applies to that applies to ass too, I guess, if there are any females listening. But if motherfuckers want something from you, don't just give it up for the sake of your dignity, right? How to negotiate from a position of perceived weakness. You want to be sure that your interests and the other person's interests, both, both parties' interests, the interests that are on both sides of uh, the said equation where they meet in the middle and shake hands or, you know, get active, where they meet in the middle and shake hands, the interests on both sides have to align. They ought to align. And if you want to make it mutually beneficial, neither side should be sacrificing their interests or their dignity or their own personal values in order to shake hands. Because once that happens... And fuck promises. You've you've already got to have contingencies in place. You've got to have something in place that is actionable that will keep the other party in the equation. Because if at the point of shaking hands they can just turn around and smoke your bitch ass or or you know leave you leave you in the dust, let let's call it right, and they can just turn around and leave whenever, then The negotiation, the equation was never fair. It was always one sided. And, uh, that comes with, that, that that comes with the ability to, the ability to, to retain, not only retain the party that is in the agreement, not only, not only keep that party interested in the agreement, but also have contingencies in place on their side that require your presence, that require your participation. That's going to mean, that's going to involve shaking hands with the best and the worst of people on your way up. Now, when you shake your, when you shake hands, again, when you shake hands, you must not sacrifice your values, your honor, your dignity to get to where you want to go. Otherwise, you will be necessarily under their thumb. You will owe your success to their existence, essentially, because and and trust that they will lord it over you. And and I'm not gonna lie, I, I low key have, but that's only been in negotiations that uh, haven't been of like a really large magnitude. Never really life, (laughs) never never really life or death, you know, for the sake of argument. But at the same time, they've been positive learning experiences and they have indeed been like, I I wouldn't shake hands on on a, I, I wouldn't shake hands on an agreement where I knew I wanted to create a partnership that I would fuck over later on. Why? Because then that just cultivates a reputation around me that is uh, very unfavorable. Sooner or later, you find that no one really wants to shake your hand and they're doing it out of reluctance. 
And sooner or later, you may find yourself in the crosshairs of somebody else. You, every, hey, everybody grows old. Everybody uh, grows decrepit. Everybody grows senile. And my dream, my dream is to put in as much work right up until the threshold of heaven's gates and knock on that bitch myself. You feel me? I'm setting myself up for... Uh, this is this is necessarily the first half of self sabotage. Go look at that episode. I believe it was in uh, season three, like in, in 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 the midst, in the middle of season three. Uh, this the first half of self sabotage. If I'm not mistaken, here let me just find that for you real quick. The first half of self sabotage, season two. Episode 16, the first half of self-sabotage, setting yourself up. It's waking up every day, working every day, putting that work in, putting in whatever dirt you have to, to set yourself up. And and then that's it. Just set yourself up. Whether or not you choose to set yourself up for success or for failure, but you want to get caught, quote unquote, caught, you want to, you want to get clipped on the rides you don't want to get clipped on the fall because <laughs> you think you're going to be negotiating and shaking hands from a uh, uh, position, a perceived position of weakness, and they clipped you on your downfall. You were on your way out. Why the fuck would you be remembered? <laughs> Why the fuck would anything that you created while you were alive? Why would anything that you created when you were alive be kept around? Like, not only would you be forgotten, but everything that you built would be erased, would be uh, 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 re, re, uh, hold on, what's the word I'm looking for? Re, (laughs) it's like recycled. Everything that you use would be repurposed. That's right. That's right. Similar to the United States Constitution now. (laughs) <laughs> meant supposedly supposedly the story goes the history goes that the united states constitution in conjunction with the declaration of independence was meant to secure the individual rights of united states citizens but but after the incorporation of the united states on the world stage the United States became a corporation, and so the the the, the fundamental rights that were that are now, uh, I mean, not so much secured, but the fundamental rights that were um, the the term is espoused, but I want to break it down. I want to simplify it a little bit. The rights that are outlined, there you go, by the United States Constitution, now particularly apply to corporations, not so much individuals. And so, because it's happened over time, and you, if you are listening to this now, and the United States is still in existence, I'm pretty sure, I bet you a dollar, a dollar, that it is still a corporation, and that you were born into this life. You were born into a corporation. Whether or not you choose to take up living like a corporate cowboy, pursuing your dreams and your objectives in a corporate cowboy-like fashion, hey, that's entirely up to you, man. All I can do, all this podcast is about is the ability for me to put down game, to lay down some knowledge, some facts, and and these have been kicked back and forth between associates and myself. Like I said, it's just been agreed on that I wouldn't necessarily be the face, but for the time being, I'm the voice, like it or not. If you want to donate, by all means, subscribe. I mean, first subscribe to the Patreon. Why not? It's like a little monthly thing and there are tiers there. And every now and then we re- we release a couple of extra little gifts and bonuses. Uh, that's the Corporate Cowboys podcast. If you want to shoot us a one-time donation or you want to come back uh, uh, on different occasions, 
There are links available to paypal.me slash corporate cowboys. There's a Venmo. There's a cash app. The links are all available. I think a Bitcoin wallet is in the works and, and some other uh, monies type stuff. All these funds go towards uh, expenses, business expenses, and legal fees. And that's all to keep this operation non-for-profit. And with that, I'm going to wish you a great rest of your week. And until next time. Because a lot of this shit has been pent up, it's been bottled up, and it's been about a week. And uh, and if the scheduling works out, fuck it, we're going to keep it like that. The tone for the podcast is going to continue being professional development, but at a much more, to a much more cathartic degree. Have a nice week.